My miles per gallon were going down. Funny smell when I stopped at sort of junctions or traffic light. And um, you can smell like that sort of burning-y sort of jammed on sort of smell. Also the uh, reel was uh, really hot as well to the touch. The, the alloy had just absorbed all that extra heat and energy. So other symptoms could be car pulling to one side. I kind of knew that my brakes were seizing um, and binding up somewhere for some reason. So there's a few causes why this could happen. The most obvious one is the rubber boot that goes around the piston seal and the actual piston has um, perished somehow and is allowing an ingress of dirt and moisture and water to get in and then it will start corroding the piston. Then when that happens, when you put your foot on the brake and it pushes the piston out, it kind of jams itself in on the piston seal so it won't then release and, and, and go back in basically. But the other thing I did notice as well, which is also another quite common one, is the guide pins uh, or guide bolts, whatever you want to call them. They're like the, the, the two two sort of pins that the, the caliper sort of goes in and out on, really. They, they should be quite well lubed up, so they're, they're free to move in and out. They often can, the back, little back caps that you put on, they can often come off. The lubricant that in there can sort of all come out with the heat and just general being washed and cleaned and then they won't they won't guide smoothly also sometimes i've done the side of calipers you actually have them the caliper grooves and slides where the other part of the caliper goes in and moves in you can get debris in them but or or if you ain't used it for any length of time you can actually get a rust in there the other thing like if obviously it's on the rear brake you've got the handbrake as well the handbrake cable could be uh season jams that's quite a really common one if it's on the rear brakes but the, the top three ones is going to be like your handbrake cable if it's on the rear um the piston seal is uh, and the piston ring pistons corroded and and it's not going back past the seal or uh, the dry slides the slides were dry so i relubed them put it back together and it was fine for a good two to three hundred miles and then it started jamming and uh seizing up again so at this point i kind of went with the obvious that it must have been the piston. So had a real good look at the piston and noticed that the piston was corroded inside. Another thing that can actually happen is the, the hose can deteriorate over time. I think they recommend the hose to be replaced every five years. Like who replaces brake hoses? Like it's one of those things that brakes get mistreated, never serviced until they're either creating a noise or the binding. They're kind of left to their own devices and, and you've got to think it's a really hostile environment underneath that car. They're going from hot, they're going from cold, freezing temperatures. They're kind of left out there in the wild, battling the elements underneath the car as you're going through mud, potholes, puddles and all that sort of jazz. So the hose um, could actually have a little perish in it, um, which could be allowing fluid to actually go one way and not coming back up when you're releasing the foot off the pedal. Normally the rubber hoses are good until they start becoming perished on the outside and cracks and then the MOT guy pulls it over and says you know it's um, damaged hose and then you need to get them repaired. So I'm going to show you how you can fix it. So I always carry a bag, a toolkit, not just for car but just for anything like which I'll do a video on at some point in the car. And in there, I've got a, a reasonably lengthy screwdriver, which you know comes in handy for things if you're trying to listen. But I had this when it then started binding up again because I could free it. When you started noticing that your car's slowing down, when you put your foot on the clutch and you haven't got your foot on the brake and it's starting to slow down and it's not rolling so easy, like now's the time to act really. Um, I didn't because I was busy. So what I was able to do when I first started noticing it, and it would only tend to really have been to happen when everything was hot and warm in there. So if I went for like um, quite a long journey, obviously the metal expands and everything. Um, so when the car was cold, everything released off and everything, you know, become um, compliant and you know was going in and out where it should have been. Um, as the car warmed up and then I started traveling further mileage and using the brakes more and everything started heating up under there obviously the metal has expanded that is when I started noticing the binding I was uh, kind of lucky that the first couple of times I could put the uh, screwdriver on it and give it a bang and that kind of must have knocked out something in there 
um, you know, maybe a bit of debris or rust and stuff. And that, that was kind of okay, just get me from A to B. Another thing you can do, um, which is kind of a bit of a last resort, but if you have to get back home or to a garage, is using the screwdriver, you can actually like poke it in between your wheels, you can put a little rack there if you don't want to damage your alloys, and, and, and just tease the, the, um, the outer bracket, tease that back very slightly, wiggle it around, which will give a, a little bit more space in there. Now that, that's only good for like, until the next time you touch your brakes. Next time you touch your brakes, heavily or a little bit, depending on how bad it is rusted, it's, it's then gonna clamp back on again and you're going to then have your brakes bind them back up again. Which, when I was coming back from a journey, I had to stop off every so often and just poke them out. But, it will allow you to get home. Another thing you can do, if they're really bad and you're stuck, say at a campsite or wherever, is you can take off your front wheel. And if you've got like a, an 18 mil socket or whatever, if you just undo those two bolts, lift up the the caliper or on some of them, the, the caliper actually hangs off. You you might want to get in there with some WD-40 and if you're careful, it, it just spray loads of WD-40 in there. Um, I, I mean, this, this isn't going to fix it forever. You're going to have to then get it done, but if you need to, if you're stuck out somewhere and you need it back up and running, if you can push in the caliper, ideally you're going to want some sort of like C-clamp or something or a block of wood and again if you've got um, a bit of a flat end if you can get the end in there in between two blocks of wood and wiggle it in some calipers will allow you to just by strength just to hold on and, and push push back but from my experience it's very difficult to push a caliper back in some cars actually got one-way valves on them as well um, on, on the master system so if you was to push in your, your caliper often they, they recommend when you're pushing the, the piston back into the caliper to actually have the bleed nipple off so then you're not putting extra pressure um, back on any of the components further up line so the, the fluid is just coming out and then you're replacing fluid and getting fresh fluid in which is probably the better way of doing you know any sort of brake work is by bleeding off any excess because then you're sort of flushing out anything that's around that piston out of the brakes as it is. If you could do that a few times, let the piston come out and back in again, out and back in again, that could give you an extra 100 to 200 miles easily, um, depending on how much you break in, how hard you break in. But as soon as that piston then starts building up a bit more rust, it starts getting hot again, it's going to start seizing and binding back in on your brakes and everything. So it's, it's, it's a fix to get you out of um, a trouble or if you just need an extra three or four days until your new caliper or your parts come your repair kit it's worth a it's worth a go you know this isn't meant for a long time fix this is hopefully just going to be a short term fix and this should actually give you a little bit more mileage back on it um you won't want to be going through your mot or anything so yeah i fell free over and out